What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. Today, I'm going to be providing a summary and a brief critique of the social justice movement within Christendom. So let's delve in. Social justice is the biggest threat the Christian church has faced in the last 100 years. Many evangelicals may be surprised to hear that, but it is true. Throughout its history, the church has faced many challenges, including ecumenism, antinomianism, and legalism, just to name a few. What differentiates SJ from these other aberrant movements is that it has different heads. Some have referred to it as a multi-headed dragon. Others have described it as a train with multiple cars. The number of its different heads, or cars, varies depending on the conservative Bible scholar, pastor, or teacher who is examining it. I've chosen to think of SJ as three different cars in a single locomotive. The first car is perhaps the most well-known. It is the race-focused segment of the movement. Prominent leaders of this wing include Eric Mason, Kyle Howard, and Jamar Tisby. The ideology of the movement originates from the Frankfurt School, critical race theory, and cultural Marxism. Of course, many of its Big Eva advocates are loath to be labeled as cultural Marxists. This is despite the fact that terms like white supremacy, white privilege, and systemic racism will frequently be used. Racism is, of course, redefined. Individuals who share my own theological perspective would have no difficulty in condemning Kluxers and National Socialists as evil racists. But that's not what we're really talking about when it comes to these Big Eva SJWs. After DT won the 2016 election, Jamar Tisby stated that he did not feel safe worshipping with white people at his church. He added that he could not feel emotionally comfortable singing and praying with people who he knew were happy because number 45 got elected. Tisby's sentiments here seem to be more in line with what modern SJ teachers have in mind when it comes to white elitism. The second car is the egalitarian one. In the past few years, there has been a surge of loud women in Big Eva who are attempting to usurp male authority. And that includes ladies in the Reformed and Presbyterian denominations. Women like Amy Byrd, who is not a daughter of Sarah by any means, and Rachel Miller, are functional womanists in disguise. They are protected and promoted by theologians as prominent as Dr. Carl Truman and Dr. Scott Clark. I don't have time in this short video to discuss the errors of these women and their allies, but if the Lord permits, I'll try to tackle them in a future upload. I'm going to say something here that is going to surprise some of you. But the best defense against egalitarianism is not complementarianism. The strongest and most consistent biblical response to Jezebel is the patriarchal or the gendered piety position. What complementarians get wrong is that this debate does not center on the roles of men and women in the church, family, and human society. It centers on the natures of men and women. See the article I've provided in the video description below by Michael Foster and non tenant for a fuller analysis of complementarianism. Men are made to rule on behalf of their father God, and this naturally begins in the smaller houses of their families and extends out into the larger houses of churches and nations. The third and final car is the gay Christian movement. Most in Big Eva would probably reject the extreme teachings of someone like Dr. Daniel Kirk. However, the movement doesn't simply consist of progressive scholars like him who deny that the New Testament writers were Trinitarian. Movements like Living Out and conferences like Revoice lack emphasis on mortifying the flesh and contain other dangerous teachings on same gender desire. Even worse, of course, are heretics like Matthew Vines. Vines is popular among progressives, and he is surprisingly gaining ground in some Big Eva circles as well. Matthew's arguments have been shredded by conservative Christian scholars like Dr. James White and Dr. Robert Gagnon. However, there are still quite a few in the conservative camp who remain woefully unprepared on how to respond to him. I've provided a link below to a 2014 dividing line with the timestamp included. This episode of the DL should be helpful to you if you are unaware of how to interact with Vine's arguments. In summation, the SJ movement is a dangerous and aberrant movement that Christians need to be wary of. SJ advocates adopt the vocabulary and ideology of cultural Marxists while denying being cultural Marxists. The movement, particularly in its race and same gender focused aspects, contains a false gospel. Let's pray that Christ will rescue those within this movement. Let's also pray for men like Eddie Robles, Phil Johnson, and many others like them who continue to battle against it. And ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.